First up is going to be our travel day, travel day, day one. Talena and I at the airport with all of the baggage. We had help getting their luggage, baggage, okay, we had help. Josefo drove us out there with all the luggage. And here we are on the plane. If you look real close, there's Talena and Dr. Vicky back there. This is our first meal in country at a restaurant with our host family on this side of the table. Uh, a herd of sheep comes walking across the road when we stopped at a gas station. And that's one of our first meals. Oh. Uh, Mandy is ready to do nursery if anybody I forgot. needs I'm it. I'm sorry. Pat, uh, Tim was supposed to say that, but yeah. he forgot. All right, this is our first meal uh, at the home, at the house. This, we're actually on the porch of Solomon's house, and uh, this was supper. Uh, you can see the, uh, the eggs and papas, potatoes, tortilla and avocados, and coffee. Well, here we are unpacking all of our duffel bags of all of the items that we took. Talena, what do you see in there? And she wasn't sure. And we're, we have everything out and about in the room, and we're trying to get it organized as we unpack all the duffel bags. This is our view from the back porch where we stayed, watching the sunset. Okay, day two. One school, one vacation Bible school, one church. Here we are at the first school. Uh, we took us into a classroom instead of us being outside this time. Dr. Vicki and I having a hula hoop contest. Can you guess who won? Wasn't me. Uh, doing a... Okay, all of these things that we're doing, they were fun, but they were also object lessons. And the object lessons obviously kept the kids' attention. And then we would always bring it back to Jesus and also to... Keep going. Okay. And also to... Uh, things of, of health and uh, being aware of your surroundings and taking care of yourself, et cetera, et cetera. This particular one was about uh, words and how words hurt. And then we did some fun, fun little puppets. <clears throat> and that's back to the words. Oh, no, that's the stop, drop, and roll. Um, Tom did some fun things for, uh, for helping them to realize that if they got on fire, there's a way to help themselves because the children up there are around fire all the time. Okay, I couldn't pass this up. It's an imprint of a soccer ball on the wall of the uh, school classroom, <laughs> right? <laughs> so I just thought, well, you know, why not? Coffee, this is Pastor Solomon's coffee laying out uh, drying. Here are the beans that have been picked. This is the time of year. They're just finishing their harvest. This is a cilantro garden at the children's home. They try to grow all their own things. We're at the children's home. I had a few opportunities for me to put new strings on the guitar. Talena helping to chop up vegetables at the children's home. A tree house at the children's home that Pastor Solomon has built for the kids. And here is the outside uh, stove kitchen stove she's making our uh, fried chicken that was delicious go ahead and uh, was there rice in this probably oh that there it is that's the meal that they were prepare, preparing outside for us This was our vacation Bible school. I believe it was our first day. Um, one of the ladies that were at Jessica's work church was kind enough to uh, print these off for us on huge paper. So as you can see, all of this is about the armor of God, and we printed it off in Spanish so that the kids could obviously understand it a little bit more. And then these will be used later on. Anita will use them um, in her ministry to the children up in the mountains. It was pretty cool. Dr. Vicki made us not use those after the second time we used them because she got <laughs> hit in the face with one, and she said they were hard. So, just more BBS. 
These are the children there in the mountains. This was our snack for the first, for the vacation Bible school, the first one. And what it was was uh, supposed to be a little Bible. It was the, sport, the sword of the spirit, obviously. And it was just a little um, um, fig bar, except it was either blueberry or raspberry, that looked like a Bible. It had a cross on the front of it, and the kids thought it was, like, super cool and delicious. And as you can see, they used their chairs for the desks to be able to color on and all that. And this little girl, she loved her hat. It was cute. And they're feverishly making the swords of the spirit right there, cutting off the edges of it so it looks more like a Bible. And that was the group that helped with the snacks. And then this was one of our activities after the VBS that helped them remember that we need to, to have our defenses up at all times. The cups stacked on the back are supposed to represent our lives, and we're trying to keep the flaming arrows from us, except the flaming arrows were really water guns. So Pastor Tim and <laughs> there's the water guns. Pastor Tim and Mr. Tom got kind of wet. And then every single time there's an activity at the church, you see this at the end. They clean. First church. This is the first church. That's uh, Norman is our translator. There's Talena giving her testimony, getting her ready to sing How Great Is Our God. Every place Dr. Vicky goes, she does uh, triage. And so this gentleman came up with a, with a wrist that was hurting. And so Norman is translating as to what his ailment is. And, and Dr. Vicky's going to tell him how to help him and what to do for the wrist. All right, day three, one vacation Bible school, one church. We would have gone to schools in the morning, but they were out for a, uh, a meeting. All the teachers had to gather together for a government meeting. Just a pretty view. Out our window, by the way, out our bedroom window. The smaller one. Yeah, we got, we got smaller ones, Vicky said, Vicky, Dr. Vicky said. She didn't want to have to treat anybody else for wounds. And we're just singing some songs and having a good time. Our snack, uh, what was our lesson for that day? The sheep, right? Oh, the lost sheep. Okay, so the we had a really cool story, really good story. Dr. Vicky actually told that story. And then our snack to help them remember the story was a little lamb that they ate. It was a graham cracker with little marshmallows and Oreo cookies in the middle, etc. And they thought that was super delicious and super fun. And we let them put the fluff on their little lamb. And they were very conscientious about that. Sweet boy. And was practicing his art of selfies. <laughs> That's with Ezekiel. And they're feverishly getting the icing on so the kids can decorate their lambs. This little boy, we decided he had the most fun and he gets the prize, if there was one, for having getting the most marshmallows on his graham cracker. <laughs> I'm not sure how many are on there, but there's a bazillion. <laughs> And then we were trying to keep the lost sheep on the parachute. And if they did get off, then there were others around that were having to gather the sheep and put them back on the parachute. So it was just a fun game. But again, we kept um, reminding them of the story and whatever we were doing. And then Tom decided he wanted to rake some beans. So he did. Did you notice and if it you, was... Yeah, if you notice, do you notice what that the beans are on? Notice the tarp that's being used for the beans. A twister. It's a twister, yeah. yeah. I guess twister they don't game. use it for twisters, so <laughs> they use it for something. And this is just coffee that's at the front of the, uh, the gate waiting to be weighed and looked at and all that kind of stuff. This is the church, the, uh, the Amori Fe Church, the brand new church in Marcala, the church that was meeting in Doris's home now meets in this facility. 
It's really nice. They have it almost complete. They don't have their floor complete. If you take a real good look, the floor here is still concrete. They have uh, boxes of tile at the back. They don't have enough yet. And so that's going to be one of our projects coming up is to buy a box of tile to help them uh, finish out the floor in the church. And Solomon will be one of the ones that helps put down the tile in the church. This was their worship time before we got uh, started with our time of worship. Then day four, two schools in the morning, vacation Bible school afternoon, and then a church. Talena's favorite teacher and, well, maybe one of the most favorite teachers in all of Honduras, kindergarten teacher. We see her every year, and she's just as a bubbly, just like Talena. These are the kids at that school. Lots of kids at this school. Frozen 2. I just had to take that picture. Frozen 2. Uh, stop, drop, and roll. Tom showing them how to be, uh, how to put out fires, which is important for them because they cook on fire. They uh, warm themselves by wood fires so they're around wood fires all the time and it's important for them to know if their clothing were to catch on fire uh, how to put it out uh, Anita translating for Talina Anita's the pastor's wife uh, Solomon's wife Anita it was a warm day so she's put up a little sunblock uh, translating for Dr. Vicky this time They're doing the bad names or bad words, putting bad words on paper, and what they have to do. You go ahead. Um, it's just an object lesson helping us to realize that the words that we say are meaningful, whether they're good words or bad words, and that you can't ever take them back. And they get to write not terrible words, but bad words like ugly and stuff like that on a piece of paper. And then um, I have a prize for after they're all finished. We go, oh, that's so cool. You used all their, their toothpaste. Oh, they're using toothpaste, by the way, toothpaste tubes. And it, after they're finished, we go, okay, now I have a prize here for the one that can take back every single thing they wrote down. If you can get all of that, all of those words back in your toothpaste tube, then you get this prize. And obviously you can't. So words are hurtful. Words, words are good, but words are hurtful as well. So know that and realize that. So I give them a little stick, and they're trying to put all this toothpaste in. Some of them are working hard trying to get it back into the tube. Another game. Um, yeah, this was, that one was talking about um, hard, hard hearts. So we had little candy hearts, and they had to try to get as many hearts from one side to the other side using a straw, sucking it up um, as they could. And, of course, the winner got a little prize. But that just helped lead us into having a soft heart for Jesus and listening to his word. And sometimes people's hearts are hard like these. So don't be like that. This is Solomon's coffee, and this is Solomon's coffee, right? Um, each bag is, uh, I thought it was about 100 pounds. They said, no, it's more like about 70, 80 pounds per bag, okay? Now, I think the next slide is very interesting. Now, watch this. I can't, I mean, just at the ease that they do this. They do that often? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> they were moving it out so we can have church. Drying lumber uh, to be used to, uh, to build. Day five, clinic day. Just, um, just know that Dr. Vicki is on the right hand side over there and she is a translator with her. And that is Alejandra, and she's a friend of ours from there. And uh, Dr. Cesar is on the left-hand side, and obviously he speaks Spanish, so he was able to do his own work. This is the girl. Her name is Yesenia. She was one of the orphans in the past. She's grown. She's about 21, 22 years old now. She is pregnant, and she lives in Marcala now. Um, she wasn't feeling well, so she decided to come to the free clinic, which is 
not always available for everyone. And thankfully, she did. Uh, we sent her to the hospital. Uh, she had preeclampsia and was just uh, in pretty desperate need of, of hospital help. So we sent her with some money down to Marcala. They drove her down there on those bumpy roads, bless her heart. And uh, as soon as she got there, they checked her out, sent her to Siquatepeque, which was, uh, is a better hospital, a bigger, better hospital. As soon as she got there, they sent her immediately to Tegucigalpa, which is a big city with a big hospital. And uh, she is fine. She had her baby by cesarean, and she and the baby are good. They're home, and all is well. But if she hadn't seen the doctor that day, we're not real sure how well she would be, have been doing. And there were at least three babies that Dr. Vicki was asked to look at. It was their first time to be seen by a doctor. The births were home births, which is not like our home births, but at the same time, it was home births. And uh, they, the mom said, oh, free clinic, good. We'll go get our babies checked out and make sure they're okay. Thankfully, again, all three of those babies were healthy, happy. Well, they weren't happy yet, I guess. They're just babies, but they were healthy and uh, doing well physically. So that was a blessing. That was a blessing for Dr. Vicki to get to check out those little tiny babies. How old was this one? This one was three days old. There was one that was 18 days old and one that was like, I don't know, 10, 12, something like that. That's the 18 day old one. Yeah. And Dr. Cesar just doing his thing. And FYI, they saw 222 patients in one day. As you see, we cleared the church out and set up the clinic in the church, so they had a much larger area to work with. Better ventilation, better lighting. Yeah. And Vicki did say that she only thinks there were a couple of there that might possibly have had COVID. So. <laughs> but as far as I know, none of us came home with it. As you cough. <laughs> and they did come in groups of the family groups. It was, they just came in family groups. This little, this young lady here with these two children was one of the kids that was in, um, wow, she was in our vacation Bible schools and all that at the beginning of time when Doris and Edgar first started it. She was one of the kids that was very faithful. Her family came faithfully to church and to any event that they had. Kate was there as a, a, phys, a respiratory therapist if needed, but uh, in, in the past, she's actually helped a couple of people with uh, knowing how to give themselves treatments and just things like that. This year, she didn't have to do any of that, but her main job this year was passing out all the fun good bags that had uh, washcloths, soap, um, toothbrushes, toothpaste, et cetera, in them. And then she would get to get, let the kids get a, a toy. So that was, that was a fun job. And I don't know how old this man is, but we're thinking he's pretty old. But he comes in every year to get checked out. You see their pharmacy all yeah, set up there? Yeah, the pharmacy is just set up on tables. These are the nurse, well, the, right there's the nurse, one of the nurses, that's the other one. And they do the blood pressure and the temperature and, you know, what's wrong with you, all that kind of stuff. Write it down and then they hand it to the nurse, I mean to the doctors. And I didn't have anything to do, and these guys were cute, so we took selfies. <laughs> and this is just, uh, there were some people that remembered that it's a long day, so they brought their lunches and had lunch on the grounds. So <laughs> This is the waiting room, and the other side of the room. Back inside again. No, that's, that's still out in the outside, waiting room. Outside, that's still outside. And this is more waiting room right outside the door of the church. They're getting closer. If they're on those benches, they're almost ready to go in. So, and There's a view of everything. And, yeah, the pharmacy is just set up on tables at the back. See the table to the left and the table to the right? The, that's where they had all of their medicines. Okay, go ahead and tell your story about Dr. Vicki. Well, Dr. Vicki, uh, all day long she's saying, I feel great. I feel good. Things are going well. And we even got to the place where we were finished and we had time. Uh, left over and that she was going to see the children from the home on Sunday instead of on Friday 
But we said, well, we have time. Should we go get them? She said, yeah, I've still got energy. Let's go. Go bring them down. So they come down and they go through their checkups. And as soon as everything is done, as soon as she's finished, she is done. It was almost as if God had been giving her strength all day long. And as soon as she was finished, she crashed. So she goes, she, she just lays down on the chairs of the couch, it, couch at the house there in the mountain. And I just put a blanket over her and she just snoozed there for oh, several minutes. I just, uh, and then went to her room and, and napped. She couldn't even make it to her room at this point. <laughs> so we thought that was a sweet picture. And while they were doing that, Naomi, their daughter, and Tom made donuts. It's one of Tom's favorite things to do. It's a funny story. Neither She doesn't speak English. He doesn't speak Spanish. And even if they did, they probably couldn't understand each other's English or Spanish. Um, so they just smile, nod, throw things in the pot, stir it up, and <laughs> laugh the whole time they're doing it. They, had no, they do not know a word the other's saying, and it's just hilarious to watch. But they have a great time, and the donuts were fabulous. And this is not coffee. This is chocolate. Yeah. So you dip to, your donuts dip in the, the donuts chocolate, in. hot chocolate. Day six, sightseeing and a quinceanera. This is in La Esperanza. It's just a beautiful... Um, it's a Catholic shrine, actually, and it's, it's, it's a tourist attraction, and people go up there to see it. This is in the, uh, a really pretty um, Catholic church there uh -huh. as well. And then we're just shopping. It's our tourist today. And those are umbrellas of above, just for decoration. And it's just their square and their city. It's a beautiful beautiful square and then we ate at a lovely restaurant it was actually very Americanized but yet the food was still Honduran it was delicious nine of us ate for a hundred and one dollars at a huge at a very very nice restaurant with lots of food on the plates then that evening uh, actually the day before uh, we were informed that there was a quinceanera going to take place the following night a quinceanera, 15th, uh, 15th birthday celebration uh, within the Hispanic uh, tradition. It is a, a coming out party for the young lady. If you've never been one, it's really fun to go to. Uh, we, it, it is primary, it started out obviously as, as a Catholic uh, ceremony, but Protestant churches and Protestant uh, Hispanic groups have adopted it as well. So this is obviously a Protestant one because it's for the daughter of the pastor of the church in Marcala, Betzaba's sister, uh, younger sister. If you remember who Betzaba was, she was a, one of the girls that was the same age as the pastor's uh, kids. So anyway, uh, we, were, we were told that there was a quinceanera. Did we want to go? We said, well, sure, that'd be fun. So we, we go, and they say, oh, by the way, Pastor Tim, would you like to say a few words? Would you like to have the reflection? I said, sure, why not? And then, she, and then they, about a few minutes later, said, oh, and Talina, they want you to sing. Oh, sure, why not? So we got put on the program kind of at the last moment. And so here's uh, where... Uh, Darciella is going to sit when she comes in in her beautiful Dariella, excuse me. And here she is, beautiful, in her beautiful dress. It was in no way uh, the extravagant production of the ones that we see here in the United States. There, uh, it was it was beautiful in its own little way. It was really really pretty, but. The, the extravagance that um, the money spent on the extravagance here was not there. Right. So it was it was just a lovely time of celebrating Dariella. So I was able to give a, a, a reflection and I used the illustration of the butterfly and how a butterfly transforms from a caterpillar to a butterfly and it is constrained by uh, it, gravity and has to be on the ground but when it gets older 
and it transforms into a beautiful butterfly. And I had some wound up butterflies in my Bible. And when I get to that point in the reflection, I say to Dariala, fly, Dariala, fly. And I open up my Bible and butterflies go flying everywhere. And it was really a, a meaningful time, I think, for her. So. And then here she is dancing with her father. Here she is dancing with her mother, who's also a teacher at one of the schools we go to, Rebecca. She's a, uh, oh, and then I got a dance with the princess as well. She comes by and, and uh, asks people to dance with her, and so she came to me. So there we go. This is her sister, Betsaba, on this side. All right, day seven, uh, Sunday at Guascapusca. This is a mountain church. This is where it's all started. Uh, notice how they have uh, put more uh, beautiful woodwork behind that used to be just a, a brick wall. Go ahead. Just a little information for that day. None of us had showered already by then for about 24 hours. The water was out in the household. So even though, just a, just a note, even though we're not doing exactly what we're accustomed to and being the way we're accustomed to, um, God was still moving and God is still there. So just FYI. Uh, this is Sunday morning, same kind of thing, cleaning up after Sunday morning every time. And here's the group of, these are the kids at the children's home ones that are there now. The only ones that are not is this gentleman right here. Uh, this gentleman, he works with Solomon with coffee. He has another uh, full-time job. And then his son. But they were all there on the day that Talena had to have an impromptu English lesson. You want to tell them about that? <laughs> well, Solomon just said, hey, we're going to go to the children's home and y'all can play with them and talk to them. And we said, oh, that'd be fun. It'd be our last time to see them before we go. We get over there and they're all seated, lined up. And we're going, huh, that's interesting. What, what are you doing? So we just kind of, you know, sat down with them and started reading books with them and stuff like that. And he comes in and says, okay, English lesson. And we went, hmm. All right. And nobody got up, right? So they all looked at me and, of course, I had to get up, and we had a little English class right there. It was kind of fun, but it was impromptu. Tell them so. about this young lady right here. Which one? Who is she? Johanna. Oh, that's Johanna. Johanna has been uh, in the children's home for, oh, goodness, seven, six, seven years or so. And she is now one of the older ones in there and obviously helps out as much as she can, but she is allowed to stay there because she's continuing her education. It's, uh, she's out of high school. She's in, uh, it's, it's not the big university, but she's taking college classes is what we would consider it at, uh, on weekends. At one of the schools there, they change from elementary school to college school. College is on the weekend, elementary is during the week. And she's being able to take some classes there. And she's just, she's just a special young lady. Anybody wants to adopt somebody, she's not quite old enough to be out of the home yet. She's a precious girl. That's Norman. He keeps us going by helping people know what we're saying. It's the foundation. Oh, they're doing an object lesson object. on, yeah, the wise man and foolish man. So obviously a rock we built stuff on and sand we built stuff on. And this is the house built on the rock. It was our snack. They like our snacks, so we continue to do that. It just helped them to remember, obviously, that... There's Johanna um, again. Yeah, there's Johanna again. She helped with that. Oh, she's also uh, teaching the children mm -hmm. in the church. She teaches their Sunday school classes now. So that's pretty cool to know. It's just so fun to watch the kids year after year. They're, they're dressed better. They're cleaner. They're healthier. Uh, it's Solomon and Anita are doing a great, wonderful job of sharing the good news of Jesus and caring for their physical needs as well.
And, and although they have wonderful parents, they are all starving. Well, the orphans don't, obviously. Um, they're just all starving for attention. So any attention you give them is just a blessing to them, and that's what we try to do. Oh, Isaac. If anybody remembers Isaac from years and years ago, it's Solomon's nephew. Um, he's back in town. So he came to visit us, and it was just sweet. That was him in the picture. Another view from our veranda. Same. We're weighing our bags. We figure if the coffee gets weighed on that, the bag should be pretty accurately weighed on it, too. So that's how we weighed our bags before we went before to we the airport. Yeah. yeah. Josue and Caleb. Josue's on the right. Caleb's on the left. And Solomon is joining us. And that is the familia that all stayed together all week long. And then we're ready to come home on travel day, day eight. The view from the Houston airport as the sun was going down. And we just want to thank our hosts, Solomon, Anita, Naomi, Caleb, Caleb and Josue, our translators, Norman, and Alejandra, Dr. Cesar and his staff, his nurses that helped. The team, Dr. Vicky, Tom, Kate, Talina, and myself. And to all of you for providing the resources and the items that we took with us. Yes, praise be to God. He is good all the time. In Romans 10, 15, and that is it for this year. And we do thank each one of you for your prayers and your support and, and for just looking at the pictures online and making comments. We could see them throughout the week, and it just helped us to realize that there were people here thinking about us and praying for us as we were doing what we, uh, we believe God was telling us to do. So thank you for that. We appreciate it. So let's go ahead and stand. And we're going to close with an, uh, one last song. And it's How Great Is Our God. <laughs> and yes, I will be singing in Spanish, but you're welcome to sing in English if you'd like, or Spanish, whatever you want to sing in. before we do that, just just briefly, um, I feel like I should read a couple of verses from Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55 is one of my favorite chapters recently. Verse 1, Isaiah 55, 1, come all of you who are thirsty, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come buy and eat. That's the invitation to come to the Lord, to come to Jesus. Verse 3, give um, give ear and come to me. Listen that you may live. Verse 6. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. This is God speaking. Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Uh, I always think of those verses when I think of missions work because we never know what we're, what we're going to be doing. We can plan, but uh, our host or the circumstances may change them. And God's thoughts are not our thoughts, and His ways are not our ways. And we have to realize that everything that happens, He's in control. He may not cause it to happen. But for some reason, in his grand scheme of thing, he allows it to happen. And it's all for the good of those who love him. Good and bad, it's all for the good for those who love him. And so even though we missed our connecting flight in Houston and didn't get home till 2 a.m., 
God is good all the time. God is good. thank you so very much for your presence here with us this day and Lord I just pray that you would bless Pastor Solomon and Anita and his family and the people of Guascapusca, the people of Marcala, the people of Honduras Lord that you would just uh, spread your love around and on them and through their lives Lord that they might continue to know that you love them that you care for them that you are gracious unto them just as you are for everyone in the world i pray lord that the, the encouragement and the blessing that we were able to share lord would just uh, would transform their lives because it's not us it's you god it's you working through us and using us thank you for blessing us for allowing us to be a part of this uh, ministry and for the blessing that you've given to us from the, from the people that we were able to minister to there. Now go with us, Lord. Empower us for your service. Send a special refreshing outpouring of your Holy Spirit upon us. We do pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. And amen. God bless you.